it is a cold but sunny day here in Phoenix, Arizona, and we have just had our first hard freeze of the year. Uh, last winter was one of our coldest winters that we've had, so we had a lot of hard freezes starting literally on Halloween. This time, it's lasted little until the beginning of January. It's actually the 10th today, so it's lasted until the 10th of January for us to actually get a hard freeze here in the Phoenix area. And so I thought it would be good to put out a uh, kind of a video about um, what a tropical food forest looks like after a hard freeze and a little bit about the plants that are protected and covered, the plants that aren't, how they look after a hard freeze, how they're doing after a hard freeze, and go through that with uh, all of you. So we're over here in the food forest part of the green yard, that tropical food forest part of the green yard. Uh, it got hit pretty hard, not terrible. We do have a microclimate setup, so some things did well, some things did not. We're gonna focus on three areas today in our video, this tropical food forest, we're also going to look at the pool area of the green yard where we have most of our bananas, we have our ice cream bean, uh, Barbados cherry, things like that. It gets a lot colder over in the pool part of the green yard, uh, typically two to four degrees colder. This area hit uh, 30 degrees last night. Um, that area probably hit 28 degrees last night. I didn't measure it, but that's what's been consistent, especially last winter. Usually gets a lot colder over there, see a lot more frost damage. And then we're going to focus on the other side yard where we have some of our other tropical trees like our black sapote, our uh, papayas as well. We have our uh, fruit punch mango, which I just released a video on too. So we're going to focus on those three areas, talk about not all of our plants, but a decent amount of our plants, show you how they did, what damage they received, if they were covered or not, and kind of go from there. If you see or you think of a tree that we have here in the green yard that I did not cover and you want to know, you know, do I frost protect it? Do I not? What has been your experience? I'd be happy to make a separate video or a short on that specific tree to uh, hopefully help you grow these beautiful fruiting and flowering trees and plants in your green yards as well. So let's go ahead and let's check out the tropical food forest part of the green yard, what received damage and what didn't. Here we go. this side of our tropical food forest first. Um, over here we have some of our more sensitive and ultra tropicals. Uh, we also do right next to the camera, which I'll talk about those uh, while I'm over here as well. Um, and the way back corner, we have our African tulip. Uh, it was beautiful just a couple days ago. I actually posted a uh, post on uh, both Instagram and Facebook about how beautiful our African tulip tree is. It's really majestic. Uh, it's about 12 to 13 feet tall was putting out new growth obviously it got hit by our uh, heavy and hard frost that we just received uh, both uh, Tuesday I'm sorry both Monday and Tuesday we had that really hard frost we're actually gonna see additional frost on Thursday Friday and potentially through the weekend uh, all, all the temperatures are projected in the low 30s here in the green yard we typically get about two degrees colder even though we're in the heart of Phoenix we get about two degrees colder than whatever is projected uh, for that uh, forecast so unfortunately we get colder and the uh, the pool part of the green yard is even colder than our food forest in our side yard too uh, right next to me we have our jackfruit tree I actually just did a video on this as well a short on this as well with covering it with frost fire i'm glad i did it actually handed handled the frost like a champ um it, it did get some damage on some of these uh pieces that are sticking out of the top of the frost fabric structure uh, but overall it did really well we'll see how it handles the next few days of frost too and then we're projected to get up into the 50s again the high 40s into the 50s here in this part of phoenix 
Uh, the African tulip, I'm not worried about that. That's actually something that happens every year. I've had it for three years already. Same with our jackfruit. Jackfruit has handled the cold great. It might lose a few leaves here and there. This is actually the first time it's suffered any frost damage. Uh, the African tulip in the back, it usually defoliates entirely. Hi, Dove. Usually it defoliates entirely during the winter and then comes back in the spring and starts putting out that new growth. So by the end of, this, of the winter, it's just gonna be sticks and then it starts putting out that new growth. Behind me, I have our Jacote, all right? So we lost our Jacote last year. Um, it was a much smaller Jacote than this one. This one has a much bigger trunk. I did cover it. I added extra warmth in there. On the inside, green, doing great, looking really good. Unfortunately, on the few branches that are on the outside, it did get uh, some of that frost damage, unfortunately. Uh, kind of expected though. They don't like our cold, just like our African tulips. So definitely something that I'm gonna protect with our frost fabric uh, moving forward. Speaking of our frost fabric structures, um, if you're only protecting your vegetables or something for a day or two, it's fine to just use these and just kind of throw them on, take them off won't cause that much damage, it will protect it. Um, overall though, with our tropical fruit trees, typically you do need some sort of additional heat source. I use the C9 Christmas light bulbs, uh, which are those big uh, incandescent bulbs. They do provide a lot of heat, so definitely be careful, keep them away from the frost fabric. This year I actually uh, put them all on bricks, maybe to have a little bit of that heat retained, but also to uh, make sure that there is no safety issues in terms of like fires, things like that, because I don't want that to happen to my trees or my house or the green yard in general. Um, if you do have some of your super tropical trees like this Jacote, definitely uh, I like to cover it in a box. And I actually did a video on this last year, which I'll include right now, but I like to cover it in uh, kind of this box format here. And then it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not gonna insulate it. It's not gonna protect it like a house would, but at least it will uh, raise the temperature enough to keep it from freezing and dying. Um, this one does have that additional heat source, which are those C9 light bulbs as well, but just a box, make sure to put a cover on it because that covers what keeps the heat in as the heat rises up and it definitely helps with those uh, tropical fruiting and flowering trees. Speaking of a tree that doesn't need to be covered, I actually have our carry mango here. This is the second year that it was not covered. Last year I didn't cover it either and uh, it did great last year. Like I mentioned last year it was a lot colder. It actually suffered frost damage last year. So far this year no frost damage at all. It looks super happy. And that is so true of our other mangoes as well, which I'll show you here in a second. Actually off to our side, I have our Fulon mango. Same thing, it's about a year younger than this Kerry mango, and I decided not to cover it this year. It is doing great, no frost damage or cold damage whatsoever. Jabba de Kaba, this is the first year I haven't covered it. I actually uh, saw one of the comments in my video on growing a Jabba de Kaba because I was concerned about protecting it. And uh, I don't remember whose name it is. I'll include the comment right here. Thank you so much for your advice in not covering the Jabba de Kaba because it is doing great. It actually seems to be doing better not covered than when I covered it the last few winters that we've had this Jabba de Kaba. So uh, it's doing great, no frost damage whatsoever. Unfortunately, our papaya, on the other hand, all of our papayas have suffered extreme frost damage. All of those leaves uh, burn back and are all dead and shriveled. If we move over this way a little bit more, we actually have some of our uh, trees that love the cold, like our loquats. Loquats flowering right now, some of the best smelling flowers uh, ever. Actually, between papayas, I didn't know papaya flowers smell good. They smell amazing. And our loquats, pretty close to high. I can actually smell the loquat flowers uh, from about 15 feet away. Wonderful, amazing. I am planning on putting at least one more loquat into the uh, green yard at some point in time, maybe two. I, I like the fruit, I like the flowers, and the tree is very unique looking. Our ultra tropicals though, let's talk about it. Uh, underneath our large frost fabric structure over here, I have our soursop tree, which is an ultra tropical as well as our santal tree. Santal tree doesn't even look like it's been cold. It, it looks the exact same as it did through the fall as we put on a whole bunch of new growth. No frost damage, no cold damage whatsoever. It is under a frost fabric structure, but it's doing great. 
even though I know it's experienced at least in the 30s already because I didn't cover it and we had a few nights in the 30s, it's doing really well. Soursop tree, not so much. It's been defoliating. Uh, last year when I covered it, I covered it a little bit earlier than this. It received and it didn't lose any leaves until the spring when I actually uncovered it and it received uh, some mid 30s for about a week or so. And uh, this year it's defoliated a lot faster as it received those 30 degree temperatures but it's kind of expected. It loses its leaves, it comes back in the spring. For us, our soursop trees are deciduous here in the Phoenix area. Just below the camera, we have our Adamoya, which is a new plant doing great in its frost fabric structure. And behind the camera, we have our haw avocado tree. Avocados don't need to be protected here from the cold, they actually do really well in our cold temperature. And this haw avocado is even putting out some new growth as it experiences 30, 32 degrees the last couple of days. Let's move over to the uh, uh, pool part of the green yard. There are some more areas in uh, the food forest part of the green yard. Just not, I don't have time to cover it all today. Like I said before, if you want to see any of our trees that we've planted or learning more about how our uh, tropical fruiting and flowering trees are done here in the green yard, please feel free to comment below. I'd be happy to make a short or a video about it or just comment and, and tell you about it. Some of our newer trees, we did uh, plant a custard apple um, last uh, fall. I didn't do a video on it, uh, it just didn't work out. But that custard apple is doing very well. It is under a frost, frost fabric structure. Um, we also have our trees like our grama chama and our lychee that actually like the cold. Our lychee is about to put out a whole bunch of new growth. Uh, it, it's enjoying this cooler temperature, those 30, 32 degree temperatures. Let's move into the pool area. Here we go. All right, so Pool part of the green yard, uh, like I mentioned before, generally gets at least two degrees colder than uh, our tropical food forest or our side yard. Um, it's wide open out here. Um, we don't have any protection or any additional trees, anything like that. So anything I put out here, it gets hit hard in the summer with that full sun and it also gets hard in the winter with the, those hard freezes. Um, this hard freeze, uh, did, it brought, kind of more surprising damage than I thought it would. Um, every year this happens, every year our bananas uh, look like this, every year our figs lose our leaves, our Barbados cherry, everything looks like this every year. So it's not out of the ordinary. I think it's just the fact that we had such great weather for so long. And here I am sitting in, uh, you know, the middle of, of December harvesting a rack of bananas, which I, I did a video on as well. Um, it's just surprising when all of that just literally the next day goes away and it looks like this and it all looks brown and dead. Uh, so definitely surprising. Over here, we took a lot of damage. Um, nothing that these trees haven't seen before or that is gonna cause them to die or anything like that. But let's go through a few of them. Uh, Barbados cherry, um, it did take a lot of frost damage. This one actually, I was debating whether to cover it or not. Uh, I still am. Uh, I did put some supplemental heat right next to the trunk. I know it doesn't do anything unless it's covered, uh, but I figured maybe maybe it'll it'll work its magic. I decided not to cover it. Barbados cherry typically you don't have to cover here in the Phoenix area, especially once they're more established. This one though is still in its first year in the ground, so probably should have covered it. I decided not to. We're gonna see how it plays out the rest of the winter. It did get some frost damage, but at the bottom, the base of the tree, green beautiful uh, growth down there so I think it's going to be okay but we'll see how the next week or so of those colder hard freezes how it does. Uh, fig this is pretty normal for our figs you know they are deciduous so they do buy, die back you actually want it to be cold so they set more fruit um, so figs lose their leaves generally look like this I'm a little disappointed we only got one harvest this year instead of two and uh, and we kind of have this winter harvest, but winter figs are not very good. Uh, they're pretty hard and they're kind of, uh, they're kind of 
I don't know, they don't taste the same. So this is what our winter figs look like. I could technically eat this if I wanted to. They they taste okay, but they're nothing like our summer figs. Summer figs are way better. So I just take these and throw them back or I let the birds come and eat them uh, here in the green yard. Uh, let's go to our bananas now. Our, cavend our dwarf Cavendish banana uh, is the most susceptible to cold, also the most susceptible to heat. I planted it in the wrong spot. It should have been over here where it's more protected. I put it out in, in the complete wrong spot. Uh, it's been doing fine. It's been living through the last three winters. It's been doing great. It just takes those freezes really hard um, and generally will die back, sometimes all the way down to the corn in the ground. Uh, and then it'll put out new new sprouts, new pups in the spring. Uh, our dwarf namwa froze back, typical as well as our ice cream bananas. It's just kind of shocking when you have big racks of bananas on the tree and then you see those brown frost, uh, frosty leaves. Uh, unfortunate, we'll see if those racks make it through. I had one make it through last year, I had a bunch that didn't. Behind me here, we have our ice cream bean. I did decide to cover our ice cream bean this year. Probably the last year I'm gonna do it. Typically, once they're more established, our ice cream beans can take those hard freezes here in the Phoenix area. Um, this year it's doing great underneath its uh, warm insulated cover and uh, it's actually putting out some new growth still as well. Behind it we have our plumeria and our uh, angel trumpet tree. Uh, I decided to cover plumerias this year just because it's the second year in the ground. Next year I will not. They can survive our winter temperature as long as they don't get any water. If they get water they tend to uh, get root rot really quickly and uh, it's all downhill from there. Over, also over in the uh, uh, pool area of the green yard, we have both a, uh, an orange tree as well as our uh, Mexican key lime tree. Both did great. Uh, citrus generally does well, even with those hard freezes. Uh, I see no need to cover the citrus. Even if it does freeze back, it'll freeze back a little bit. Uh, but that's here in the green yard. Like I said, we'll generally see 20, 30. We've seen 30 degrees already this year. Uh, last year we saw 28 degrees a lot, so uh, we definitely are colder here in the green yard as well. Um, we also have, oh, behind the frost drive, you guys can't see it, but I'll cut to it. We have our newly planted uh, pink Mexican guava, and uh, it took some hard frost. Uh, guavas typically here in the green yard, what I've noticed is that they will, they take that frost pretty hard but they always come back in the spring. So um, I have a more mature Barbie pink guava that I've done a harvest video on before as well. Took hard frost too over by our Indian jujube. And uh, it, it's, that's what it did last winter. It lost all its leaves, came back in the spring. So I have a feeling that both our Thai white guava, which is newly planted, as well as our um, pink Mexican guava will end up coming back from this frost that they got. Uh, Indian jujube, speaking of Indian jujube, it's over my left shoulder actually, over by our irrigation pond. Didn't even know it frosted, didn't even know it reached 30 degrees. It's kicking butt and uh, it has grown a lot. No issues with frost over there at all with that Indian jujube. Uh, that's really it for the pool area of the green yard. Let's go ahead and check out that side yard as well and see how things did over there. Here we go. Done a few videos over here in the side yard of the green yard. Remember, uh, even though we have our, our tropical food forest, which is this huge side yard, uh, we do have a normal side yard too, which is about six feet wide. Uh, I recently did a video uh, both on our black sapote, our chico sapote, our sapodilla, as well as our uh, fruit punch mango, which are all doing great. So this is actually probably one of the best parts of the green yard right now with that frost. Granted, it gets a lot of protection from the house, which is nice, which is why I'm enjoying planting these tropical trees over here uh, in this side yard. Um, Fruit Punch Mango, I had a lot of people comment and say, you know, you're not covering your mangoes. What's going on? Why aren't you doing that? Um, I've noticed with our carry, with our 
full-on um our mangoes do fine here in the green yard with that cold even 28 degrees that carry mango saw 28 degrees a lot last year and it did great and uh i i haven't noticed any issues there is no frost damage at all on this mango uh, which is awesome. There's no frost damage either with our Spirit of 76 mango, which actually has uh, more openness above it. This one has kind of our neighbor's mulberry tree and this papaya, which took a hard frost. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, this one's a little bit more protected. That one's wide out in the open. No frost damage whatsoever, which is awesome. Uh, so for me here in the green yard, I'm not going to cover my mangoes anymore. The only one I covered is our Super Alfonso because I just planted it. And even that one in its little structure did awesome. Uh, this papaya is uh, the one that has the most fruit for us. And unfortunately, it took a hard freeze. Uh, probably the worst out of all the papayas that we have. It froze back. I'm hoping that the fruit stays on until uh, spring. I don't know, maybe you guys can let me know too. This is the first year that we've had fruit on our papayas. Anyone growing papayas, if you, uh, I don't know if you can harvest it before and have it ripen, uh, kind of like bananas do. Uh, I've done some research and it says you can't, so I don't know. I know you can use them green. I really want the fruit uh, and, and to eat it as fruit when it's ripe. Behind it is that Chico Sapote, that Sapodilla. Didn't even notice that there was frost or cold temperatures. Doing awesome. I did protect it just because it's in its first uh, kind of second winter in the ground, right? It, it did have last winter under a frost fabric structure this winter as well. And then next winter, I'm not planning on covering it. They can do great here in the green yard without being covered. Dragon fruit did awesome. We already talked about our Spirit of 76. And then we have our Black Sapote. So Black Sapote is another one of those uh, tropical trees, right? Uh, I have covered it every year. I'm planning on continuing to cover it every year. It's just one of those trees like our Soursop, like our Atamoya, our Cherimoya, our, um, our uh, Custard Apple, even our uh, Santal tree. I'm just going to keep covering it. Uh, until I can't anymore or I'll cover it like our jackfruit tree where the top sticks out right and at least it will only die back to that top um, The only other area I was going to mention is out in the front yard front yard took a hit this year, too Granted, I only have one non deciduous tree out there, which is our rainbow eucalyptus I haven't made any video videos or talked about our rainbow eucalyptus, eucalyptus yet It's doing great even with this hard freeze uh, you can notice there is some freeze damage on there, but nothing crazy. Last year I covered it. Uh, it was its first winter in the ground. Uh, and what I noticed is that everything above the frost fabric structure, because I couldn't cover the whole tree, everything above actually put on new growth and kept growing. So I decided not to cover it this year. Uh, and we'll see what happens. I don't know. It's a pretty big tree. It's about 15 plus feet right now. So we'll see if it's past that point uh, where it it doesn't need to be covered or protected anymore. Uh, behind you in kind of the patio part of the green yard, uh, it took a hit too. Um, our uh, Turks cap hibiscus died way back. Same with our day blooming jasmine, uh, it took a pretty big hit too. Uh, but things like our Thai white guava, it did okay. Uh, yeah, it took a hit, but it still uh, has those green leaves. And then our Budahan citron did really well as well. Um, that one is, uh, from my research, one of the more frost sensitive and cold sensitive of our citrus trees. I did protect it the first year in the ground and since then I have not. It has been in the ground for over three winters now, uh, which is pretty amazing. Um, I'm hoping for a short winter this year. We can start getting into that spring weather, start getting that fruit going. I'm hoping to get mangoes off of these guys this year. As I mentioned before, if you didn't hear one of the trees that you know we have, or if you have questions about covering uh, any of your fruiting or flowering trees, I will do my best to answer those questions. Please feel free to comment below. Check out some of our other green content on our social media pages, which will be linked in the description. And of course, if you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe. And as always, live green, plant lots, and have fun. We'll see you next time.